As a platform, the Misc Reliant aims to live up to its name by offering lots of slightly different holes to do slightly different things. And one of those arrives in the form of the Reliant Sen, offering players the opportunity to get into light science, whatever that means. But how does it stack up in-game? I'm Farrister, and in this video I try to answer that question by spending some time reviewing the currently flyable Misc Reliant Sen. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, the format will be familiar. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the three quarters of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos as they go live. You get into the Reliant Sen much like the others in the Reliant series via a deployable ramp at the rear of the ship. This takes you into the main body at the back of the ship. On the left or port side are two beds, and on the right or starboard side is the science station. The science station is a currently workable seat, but it doesn't do any science, all it does is offer you the standard crew position heads up display type screen. Although they don't really have any function in game at the moment, on the right or starboard side in the mid section there are some science gizmos. And on the left or port side is that usual MISC shower toilet combination. And then moving forward to the front section is the cockpit. There's the pilot seat on the left and a co-pilot seat on the right. By default, your Sen comes armed with two fixed M4A laser cannons. As with other ships in the Reliant series, you can opt to increase that firepower by adding additional weapons to the wingtip mounts, either a gimbal size 3 or dual size 2, and you can do that on each wingtip. If you're going to be running a Reliance Sen, at least until some implementation of science type mechanics, you'd do well to invest a little in making those upgrades, as they will considerably increase the combat capability of the Sen. You also get four size 2 missiles, which is pretty fair for a ship at this size point. And defensively you get two size 1 shield generators, which doesn't offer much by way of protection, but again is comparable to most other ships at this size point. As with other variants in the Reliant series, the co-pilot can enter into the wingtip weapons if you have the remote turret mount equipped, but for the most part you're better off just slaving them all to the pilot. Combat wise, if you invest in all of the upgrades, performance is fairly decent for what is a specialised starter ship. Due to the capacitor limits, you're likely to end up jousting a lot, and will need to be somewhat careful as your wings are very vulnerable, and when you lose a wing, you lose firepower. But against smaller targets, the Reliant Sen can still come out on top. Part of what makes the Reliant so nice to fly is the open cockpit at the front. There is excellent visibility all around, including to the sides and below. It's also helpful to be able to look across and see whether the ship is in rotated configuration, for example for landing or vertical configuration. And yes, if you didn't realise, the whole body of the Reliant rotates as it toggles between VTOL and flight modes, which is a useful feature for avoiding obstacles. Handling wise, the Reliant is fairly nice to fly. It's pretty nippy in a straight line, but the thrusters that control manoeuvring aren't quite so powerful as the main engines, which can make the Sen a little tough to handle when there are crosswinds, or if you're trying to change direction too abruptly. The top speed is 1150 meters per second, which is mostly fine. It's a lot slower than dedicated interceptors, which is noteworthy if you're being chased. The stock quantum drive is the Goliath, which although offers a decent range, is incredibly slow. Sadly, the high end military grade drives aren't really a good option for the Sen, owing to the relatively small quantum stores, but an upgrade to a decent civilian drive such as the Voyage is still a good option to reduce travel times. 
although perhaps some players will be quite happy to travel more slowly with this ship in order to do science things? The Reliant Sen is a starter ship, and in line with other starter ships, is incredibly cheap to operate. You'd have to work hard to get to a thousand Alpha UEC, probably firing all of the missiles and breaking most of the ship. It also has a few different options for covering those low costs. With the space in the back, it's possible to run box delivery type contracts. There's space for other players, somewhat safely since you can isolate them into the back of the ship if you're fearful of being attacked en route in case you wanted to do some personal transport missions. And low end combat missions are also feasible, especially with a small investment in some upgrades. The upgrades I'd consider for the Reliant Sen are swapping out the Quantum Drive for a Voyage, which will give you faster travel times but still a reasonable range. Then I'd pick up the turret mounts from Area 18 for dual size 2 weapons on each wingtip, and add extra M4A cannons to each. Since the components we're talking about are all fairly low cost, I'd also invest in force wall shield generators and a JS300 power plant. That's to give a good balance loadout for if you end up in combat. But with a fairly low profile, some players may prefer to go with stealth components. As for the rest of it, the Reliant Sen is fairly niche. On the one hand, you get the advantage of just how modular the Reliant is. By that, I mean you can easily add in extra components to get close to the maximum potential of the chassis. In the back, the inclusion of the extra station for a third crew member also makes this one of the smallest ships out there that could theoretically offer crew roles to three players. It's got all of the other versatile bells and whistles like beds, the disgusting shower-toilet combination, not to mention it's fairly easy to fly. And at 840,000 Alpha UEC, it's fairly cheap. The pledge price is $75, although if you wanted a Reliant type starter ship for some sort of price like that, you might be better considering the Tana, which also comes with additional missile mounts. But at the moment at least, whilst the Sen looks great, it doesn't really do anything unique. The back seat operates much like any other crew station at the moment, which is to say, it also doesn't really do anything. The science equipment, whilst it looks cool, is non-functional at the moment, so if you're looking into the Reliance Sen, you're probably more interested in what might be in the future, which honestly at this point is all pure speculation. So I'd probably steer clear, and if you like the Reliance series, opt for one of the more tried and tested variants, like the Tana. But do you agree? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button as it helps me to know what you're finding most helpful. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching.